Welcome to uh, launch day. Yeah, the engine cover is up. <laughs> Something's going on with our alternator. It's one more thing. So I'm gonna crawl underneath the aft deck and hunt for the electrical box, which has Garrett's voltmeter, and see if we can figure this out uh, before the tide switches. <laughs> Here we go. It's so nice and packed in here. Oh, this is so irritating. Ever feel like it's impossible to leave? Like the universe is telling you, don't do it, you're not ready. I'm no alternator technician, but I want to check the basics. I don't really know what would cause it to do this. Um, I mean, I thought it was just belt tension, but it's also, and I, I adjusted that and that helped with the screeching a little bit, but it's still screeching pretty badly and it's not putting out any uh, power and it's getting super hot. Um, to the point where I'd be concerned about, you know, starting a fire in the engine room and that's, uh, or at least just burning through the belt or something. And that's definitely don't want to risk that. So we're going to figure it out. Okay. Can you do me a favor? Yeah. Can you turn the key just to the on position, but don't, don't initiate the starter motor. Okay. Okay, so we've got power to the exciter. Garrett tightened and fiddled and, well, hit a few things. Huh? Getting charged now? Getting charged now? Yeah. Not only were we not getting charged, but the alternator was getting extremely hot. So we weren't getting charged. Now we're getting charged. Did you just tighten things up? Well. We'll see if it gets hot. Kind of line the belt up better, but I mean, it's a hard point of attachment at the bottom, so you can't really move it too much. I have no idea. Yeah. I have absolutely no idea, but seems to be working. So let's get out of here. Okay. <laughs> Obviously, we're we're prepared. Not talking Boy Scouts prepared. We're talking big time prepared. Big time prepared. And uh, yeah, if anything's gonna happen, it's gonna happen out there. It's gonna happen out there. Okay, so maybe it's problem solved on the alternator. <laughs> Some phantom weird thing just to shake our nerves. <laughs> You're on. We'll unplug from shore power, get our stern hook, which is sort of like our spare Danforth, an extra road. Get that on board. That's the last thing to come on board. And uh, the keys are in the ladies' machine <laughs> for Diaz to take her whenever he's up and about today. The plan has been that we're gonna, uh, we've told the marina our 30 day notice. So we still have 30 days. We've got a slip just in case we break anything out there. Um, but yeah, a couple days hop to get to Sausalito, which is where we'll home base while we're sea trialing for, I don't know, maybe a couple weeks. And uh, if everything goes well, then we'll be heading out the gate, turning left, hopefully before July. But I don't know. I should be cautious throwing dates around. <laughs> extra, 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 read all about it. We didn't film any of it, but Garrett got the support arms all in and done. So we can permanently hoist the dinghy up here. Probably still not offshore passage. We'll fold the dinghy up and put it probably on the cabin top or somewhere up here on the foredeck. 
I think it's like an hour after high tide now. It still seems like it's come up a little bit. So I don't, I don't think we're quite at the turnaround, but we want to ride the ebb down south. Our first stop is the fuel dock. You ready, my love? Hey, we're still right on time. Yeah. We've been saying in between 10 and 11. It's 10:14. Good thing we woke up early. <laughs> yeah, you know, when we first woke up, I was definitely like, why do we, why do we set our alarm so early? That's completely unnecessary. We don't even have to do that much. That's why. Now you should what? just shove out. And yeah, you just gonna. Load. What are you gonna do with your bowsprit? Do it. Uh, later. Actually, I'm probably just gonna drop it right now, and it's super quick, and then head out. And the gym over there is circling. He's gonna buddy boat out with us uh, yeah. just down the river a bit. Look how sexy that is! <laughs> <laughs> Hell yeah! about to cross that threshold. Red Aviva's never passed channel marker 13. Across the field at Mount Tamalpais. 
Now we pass channel marker after channel marker, our bow pointed south for the foreseeable future. Go, Jim, go! Finally far enough south to be on the map, we pass channel marker seven and look for a spot to anchor south of the electrical towers. Here we'll wait for tomorrow's tide and the Mare Island Causeway Bridge to open. Then it's 20 miles across San Pablo Bay to our next stop, China Camp. While Jim prances around, we hunt for good depth to park this big girl. She's not ready to hoist sail quite yet, but she could no longer stay at the dock either. We still have so much to do, but getting out here was what we had to do. adventure yeah we just uh cruised up one of those sloughs it was really cool we went until we found mud <laughs> <laughs> and i just finished up the latest episode so now i have my evening much to celebrate today oh yeah Yeah, well, not finished. Wow, that's finished for me. Yes. Leaving the dock it's is finished enough. Yeah, <laughs> it's transitioning now to actually being a, a cruising on the port sailboat, not just a project. Yeah. is the USS Corey, built in 1921 in San Francisco. She never saw battle during her service and was decommissioned in 1930, a few miles away at the Mare Island shipyard that we'll be passing by tomorrow. She was sold for scrap and scuttled here, either just abandoned or with the intention of building a breakwater. It's a bit of a mystery. She's 314 feet long and has a beam of 31. It is a good breakwater. Yeah. It is. It's like potting soil. Oh, wow. That you would buy from the store. <laughs> Interesting. It almost looks like a little sunfish or something. I think this is one of the nicest beaches I've ever walked on. <laughs> oh, it's, it's so, so pleasant. pleasant. <laughs> I, 
Yeah, I mean, I mean, it's like, did somebody lose a load of potting soil? Right? right. Something is just so soft. <laughs> oh, yeah. We, we oh, yeah. salvage this. Okay. Some good hardware, a little, little block. block there. Parking, baby. From building Red Aviva to sailing Red Aviva. Thanks for joining the journey. <laughs> Dearly hope this isn't the last time I see you guys, too. No. You gotta meet us down in Mexico, man. Yeah. <laughs> set up to take off the uh, sail tarps. I dare not call them sail covers. I'm gonna make legitimate ones at some point, but we've got two pieces of canvas and a bed sheet for our staysail. <laughs> um, but yeah, once we get out into the San Francisco Bay, we'll have a lot more space and we can really kind of dial all of that stuff in and get the sails up and officially start sea trialing but these next couple of days is really just getting out of the river and getting closer to the bay where, you know, we can sort of stretch her legs out and, and really, I don't know, center ourselves to <laughs> into the next phase. And yeah, the boat still needs to get packed away. Dishes still need to be cleaned from last night's party, uh, but we'll get it all done early alarm tomorrow. We've got high tide at 940, so got some time. Good night. Ruth is a really good editor. Okay, put some music on that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So sweaty. Scurry. Oh. Oh, God. Oh, what are you? You funny little creature. I'm, 
I'm shoving my dinghy off after looking at a old Rex radioactive military ship. Sir, you are an artist in more than one field. <laughs> <laughs> Everything just tastes better in a tortilla. <laughs> could be worse. Uh, we could be at the dock. Yeah. Mom, are you watching over your little brother as he naps? Huh? Oh, what a good boy. Needless to say, it's an emotional day. <laughs> <laughs>